Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the questions I get from around the world. I believe this is episode 150, so it's sort of a milestone. Okay, let's jump into it. Alex from Toronto, Canada says, is there any good place to find dinosaur fossils in Toronto? Well, Alex, uh, Canada is absolutely a treasure trove of dinosaurs, but at first, I don't know if any of them are found in or around the Toronto area. I'm not that familiar. But more importantly, I believe that fossils are the property of the country when it comes to Canada. I think that all fossils belong to the state or, or the country or whatever, however it is you guys uh, break the different uh, parts of the country up. I don't know what you refer to those as. But um, I'm almost certain that you are not allowed to, to dig up and collect dinosaurs in Canada uh, without some kind of approval or permission of the country. So uh, I would say, Alex, that the, probably the first thing to do would be to find out exactly what the laws are for your particular part of the country. For the rest of you, uh, especially here in the States, I know that for you, if you'd like to go look for fossils, there's a series of books called the Roadside Guide series. And in those books, it gives you places that the public can go look for fossils. I believe there's one for every state. So there's, I know there's a roadside guide to Texas geology. There's one called a roadside guide to Oklahoma geology and so on and so on. And those books kind of give you specific places where the public can go look for fossils. So Alex, if, if you are allowed to dig up fossils in and around Toronto, I hope that you're able to locate a good place and, and uh, find something cool. All right, Chris from Green Bay, Wisconsin. My father was born in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, so we have a big affinity for Wisconsin. Hello, Dinosaur George, I hope you're doing good. I am Chris, hope you're doing good as well. I was wondering, I'm a huge fan of raptors ever since seeing Jurassic Park. However, I was asking, is Deinonychus considered a raptor dinosaur, or is it its own independent bipedal theropod? Thanks, and I wish you luck. Well, thank you very much, Chris. First of all, for you young folks out there, uh, the, the scientific term for raptor is dromaeosaur. Dromaeosaur is the true name. Raptors is, the, is, is what we use as a nickname, and there's nothing wrong with calling them raptors. Second of all, when he used the word bipedal and theropod, bipedal means a dinosaur that walks on its hind legs only, on its back legs, and theropod is another scientific term for meat eater. So a bipedal theropod would be a two-legged meat eater or a dinosaur that walks on two legs. So Chris, yes, he absolutely is a member of the raptor family or dromaeosaur family. He is. Um, it can be a little bit confusing sometimes when you hear the word raptor and then you see dinosaurs that have the word raptor in their name. It would be easy to make the assumption that that then belongs to the raptor family or dromaeosaur family, but that's not the case. Um, Eoraptor has nothing to do with the raptor family uh, per se. Um, Conchoraptor is not a raptor. Megaraptor is not a raptor. Using the term raptor to describe dromaeosaurs. So the same goes with Deinonychus. He is not, his name doesn't have raptor in it, but he is absolutely part of the raptor slash um, Dromaeosaur family. So indeed, Chris, yes, he is a raptor. He used to be the biggest until Utah Raptor and uh, who else came along? Somebody came along that was bigger, a kilobator, and I think somebody else was a little bit bigger. So anyway, he is Chris, and I love that dinosaur. All right, Anthony from Cascade, Maryland. You know, I used to live in Suitland, Maryland when I was a kid, Anthony. I don't know where that is in relationship to Cascade, but there's a bit of information for you. Hey, DG, hope you're well, and my question is, what is your opinion of the most dangerous sea creature of all times? Wow. Of prehistoric times. He says prehistoric times, not all times. Uh, Anthony, wow. Uh, boy, it's hard to beat. Obviously, it's hard to beat Megalodon simply because of its sheer size. But in my opinion, what would have been even more dangerous than Megalodon is Tylosaurus, the giant Mosasaur. The reason why I say that is Tylosaurus, with its more snake-like body, had the ability to come into much, much more shallow water, whereas Megalodon is relegated to deeper water, I think uh, Tylosaurus would have been an absolute terrifying animal because he could have hunted in the depths, but he also could have hunted in the shallows, meaning he literally ran the, ran the ocean during the late Cretaceous period. So my guess or my opinion would be Tylosaurus is the worst. Now, of course, there's uh, Chronosaurus and there's like Pluridon, but again, those guys are not really built for speed per se. They don't really have the same body as um, as Tylosaurus, so they would have been dangerous. But again, in my opinion, they couldn't have come into the shallow water, and that's what makes um, 
that's what makes uh, Tylosaurus the worst. Okay, Jao Kim from Helsinki, Finland. Hello, DG. How are you? I'm doing great, Jao Kim. Good to hear from you. I am half Mexican and half Finn. Wow. What does that make you then? A Mexifin or a Finnican? Yeah! <laughs> I don't know, but that's actually kind of a cool, that's kind of cool. Uh, I'm also interested in both cinema and prehistoric life. Ah, good for you, man. What do you think is the best portrayal of dinosaurs in film or media? Wow, what a cool question. Woo, what a cool question. I wish I would have had time to read these in advance because I could have given this some more thought. I, I'm, I've got to say that the BBC's Walking with Dinosaurs is probably, to date, the best portrayal of dinosaurs in film. And the reason why I say that now, I co-created, wrote, and hosted Jurassic Fight Club for the History Channel. So people would say, my gosh, why didn't you say that? Well, the reason why is because the dinosaurs that you saw in uh, Walking with Dinosaurs, there was an incredible amount of work done on those, and every single minuscule detail was highlighted, in my opinion, and therefore given much greater realism. Uh, Jurassic Park was pretty incredible. I'm certainly proud of the animation used in Jurassic Fight Club, but again, you're talking about light year difference between the quality of work. And the reason why I say the quality has nothing to do with the animators, it has everything to do with budget. When you've got a uh, million dollars, that's a lot of money. When you got $50 million, that's a whole lot of money. And so the animation quality was better because there was a bigger budget. So I think that would be the best representation. But that's a very cool question, man. And it's cool to know that I know a half Mexican, half Finnish person. I think that's kind of cool. My biggest question would be, uh, is your, is your, was the Mexican side on your dad's side or your mom's side? And how did you end up in Finland or how did that person end up in Finland? I find that kind of stuff interesting. All right, let's keep cruising. Rachel from West Des Moines, Iowa. Which dinosaur lived in the ocean and spouted water? Rachel, that's kind of a cool question. Now, no dinosaur lived in the water or the ocean. And I say that, and I know that can be confusing because every book we see, we see swimming dinosaurs. Well, Dinosaurs, the true description of a dinosaur is that it is a land animal, that it is a terrestrial animal. There were cousins that lived in the ocean, the swimming reptiles, the mosasaurs, the plesiosaurs, the pliosaurs, the ichthyosaurs. Even though these animals lived at the same time uh, in the same general area as dinosaurs, they're not considered dinosaurs. Now, they didn't really spout water like a whale. Whales don't really spout water. What you see is when they come up to take a breath, the first thing that they have to do is literally blow the water out of the area, their nostril or blowhole, where they're going to take in a breath. So the first thing they do is exhale. And when they do, it blows the water out. And that gives that appearance that they're spouting water. But they really didn't. Now, uh, I think you would have seen that in mosasaurs and ichthyosaurs and all the swimming reptiles. But because they're not as big as whales and because their lungs are not as big, you wouldn't have seen as dramatic a into the air. Uh, plus, when you're predatory, you don't want to make too big of a sound simply because you're giving away your position. All right. Reese from, is this pronounced Lanerst, Wales? Lanerst? I don't know. Hello, George. I have two questions for you, buddy. First, I'd like to say uh, that throughout the course of your Ask Dinosaur George videos, I've learned a lot about paleontology, and it has expanded my knowledge in the subject. You are my inspiration, and I'd like to have the honor of meeting you someday. Wow, what an incredible nice thing to say, Reese. You know, I would love to get an opportunity to meet you as well. I'd love to go to Wales. I've never been there, and I'd love to go. And um, thank you. That's the, It would be my honor to meet you, trust me. So thank you very much, man. My first question is, do you think it's plausible that Cryolophosaurus, my favorite dinosaur, would have come together and entered a state of suspended animation where they huddled together for warmth to battle the cold? Wow. Whoa. See, that's thinking outside the box. That's, that's, that's a cool one. Um, wow. Well, Cryolophosaurus, for some of you that may not know who he is, he's the dinosaur with the weird little flap on top of his head, and he is considered a polar dinosaur because he was found in Antarctica. Uh, I think it's Antarctica. Better be. Um, and so Reese's question was, is what, what did they do in the extreme cold? Did they huddle together? Did they, did they sort of semi-hibernate? I don't know. I don't know if they could do that or not. Now, because they were a little bit bigger and, and they would have had a little more body mass, 
Maybe they didn't need to. Maybe they had the ability to be an endotherm, meaning create their own heat from within their body. Certainly, I suspect they were covered with feathers or maybe hair that uh, are hair like feathers that would have given him some sort of insulation. So I don't know. Now I do know that when a polar bear hibernates, you can see it in the growth pattern of the bones, the cell structure of the bones. During hibernation, he slows down. He doesn't really grow anymore and therefore it's visible. My guess would be that if he was capable of doing that and if he had done it, scientists would have recognized that, that they would see uh, a, a series of growth in the bone, typical normal growth, and then a complete stoppage of that growth, which would represent a hibernation period. So I don't know necessarily if they could or if they did, but that is a very interesting question. His second question is, I've been puzzled by something for a while. I've seen two depictions of Cryolophosaurus, one being a rather bulky looking dinosaur and the other a more coelophysoid looking dinosaur, which is more sleek and slender. But which depicts Cryolophus more closely to reality? I'd be honored for you to answer these questions and stay in good health. Well, thank you, Reese, and thank you for that kind comment. I hope you and your family stay in good health as well. Um, the depiction of Cryolophosaurus, I think the reason why you're seeing two different, why you're seeing a robust model and a sleek model is because a sleek model probably is what most artists would think Cryolophosaurus should look like because he's a theropod and most theropods aren't chunky. But in my opinion, based on his environment, maybe the chunky version would be the proper version. That would be, um, you know, being a little more heavy, having perhaps a, a layer of fat to give him some kind of protection or sort of looking like he's wearing an overcoat. Because of where he lives, I would suspect that if Cryolophosaurus is, is going to live there, he's gonna have the body to be able to withstand it. So I think go with the chunky version rather than the smooth version. We're not talking about peanut butter here, we're talking about Cryolophosaurus, everybody. All right, listen, if you guys have a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, fill out the form and submit it. I'll do my best to answer it. Until then, uh, for all you young people, continue to practice your reading because reading is very important. And for everybody out there, cannot tell you how much I appreciate your good manners and courtesy. Take care of the people around you because that is what truly determines your character is how you treat others. Until then, see you guys. Uh, I'll shoot a couple more of these today, I hope, uh, and keep pumping them out. See you soon.